Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I want to welcome you to today's President's Roundtable. As uh, the President and CEO of the All Stars Project, one of the things that I really enjoy is I get an opportunity to have conversations with people like Kathy, you know, with policymakers, with intellectuals, with academics, with people who are creating to new understandings of some of the most pressing issues that are facing us. And I'm thrilled to have Kathy Eden joining us today for our conversation, um, in fact, a new conversation about poverty. To introduce our special guest speaker today, I want to bring to the stage Dr. Lenore Filani. Thanks, Gabrielle. Hi, everybody. So I and we met Kathy about nine months ago when she very first visited us here at the All Stars. I was intrigued when she spoke about her commitment to helping America to see the lives of the poor in our country and to challenge through her work the many myths about poor people that have subjected them to inhuman mistreatment and ill-formed policies that have been a complete and utter failure. To her great credit, Kathy has ruffled the feathers of more traditional social scientists with her commitment to sitting down with people, asking, and more importantly, listening to them tell their stories. The All Stars is not founded on, nor do we practice social science. Instead, we have pursued a different direction for both understanding, developing, and transforming people in our society. One way to characterize this is that we are committed to creativity and giving ourselves and the people in the core community with whom we are partnering permission to break out of knowing and to create what they and we never thought was conceivable. Humanistic researchers like Kathy to come to All Stars and be with our young people and adults from East New York, from the South Bronx and from Bed-Stuy, and with our donors from the Upper East Side. It's so meaningful that you and we are here, and it's very, very special to have Kathy's leadership and voice in the mix. Please welcome Kathy Eden. I'm gonna make a confession. I uh, grew up the daughter of an artist. Uh, my mother not only worked as a parish worker in our congregation, but she was a fine artist. And uh, literally, I had green or orange hair for weeks at a time because I would do somersaults into her oil painting. I was that, that kid, but as a poverty researcher, I was completely blind to the role and importance of the arts in kids' lives. I will tell you that uh, I really was missing this. And, and not only did I sort of miss it, I dismissed it. Um, but quite by accident in the early 2000s, I got involved in a research project. And this research project uh, followed young people. Um, when we started following them, they were in grade school, uh, whose parents had been part of one of the largest uh, social experiments of our time. And what this experiment did is it identified children and families in the most distressed high-rise public housing in the country and offered them the opportunity to volunteer to move to a higher resource neighborhood. In 2002, uh, in Baltimore, we began following the children uh, that had been involved in this experiment, that, whose parents had moved. And I was astonished uh, by what I saw. Now, you might assume most of these kids got caught up in some way in the streets. Uh, but we found that, uh, what we found uh, over the course of our study is that only a tiny number, 27 of the 150 kids we found had ever engaged in any kind of illegal behavior um, other than smoking pot. 82% uh, of these kids were on track by studies and they were aspirational, uh, they had dreams. This experiment got them to an average neighborhood. It didn't get them to a high resource neighborhood. It didn't get them to the best schools. It got them to sort of 
the average that the city of Baltimore had to offer. And as they reached uh, the middle of their 20s, and again, we're just getting kids, giving kids the average. They reported 31% higher earnings, 32% increased college going, and the quality of the colleges that you were going to was higher. And they were 26% less likely to become single parents. Now, what the researchers concluded, this team of researchers that have been following these kids uh, for the last 20 years, was that this was not uh, due to sort of the usual suspects. It wasn't because their parents were closer to jobs or, or uh, any of that. It was because as young people, they were exposed to a broader range of opportunities. They were exposed to communities that were more likely to have a recreation center, an arts program, a school uh, that had more of these kinds of, of, of opportunities. Uh, what the researchers identified was responsible for these incredible gains for these kids was what they called a developmental effect. The developmental context had been transformed by simply moving from a very high poverty neighborhood to the city's average. You know, these things that seem to be sustaining young people at this critical part in the life course, uh, we came up with a phrase, identity projects. Uh, identity projects are, are things that provide meaning and identity, something to be about uh, at a critical point in the life course. And they provide a bridge between where kids are at present in this aspirational future. Now, we don't want to be overly romantic about these kids. These kids still have an uphill battle. Uh, they have incredible uh, trauma. Just among our kids, these 150 kids, 25% had experienced the death of an immediate friend or family member, usually uh, not from natural means. 35% had actually witnessed someone being shot, stabbed, severely beaten, or killed. And this is by the early 20s. 29% had been arrested and either jailed or put on probation. 15% had been a victim of rape or severe physical abuse. And 36% had had to live away from a parent for a period of time, 6% in foster care, but 30% uh, in, in relative care because there was something wrong at home. And finally, I want to talk a little bit about what happens institutionally to these kids' dreams. Now, most of our kids wanted to be nurses, architects, accountants, professors, actors. But over time, their transition to adulthood, much in contrast to the middle class, became expedited. Now, we know from the work of Jeff Jeffrey Arnett that the middle class, uh, the transition to adulthood is elongated. But for these kids, there's pressure to engage in the labor market. There's pressure to make your own way. Your home is overcrowded. They need your contributions. You're desperate to move out on your own. So oftentimes there was pressure to turn that dream of becoming an RN into becoming a nursing, nurse's assistant. That dream of becoming a pharmacist uh, became a security guard. So I think in our advocacy, in our activism, we need to be that bridge uh, that, that are, that th those people that provide young people with, uh, with the inspiration, right, to get from where they are to what they dream of being. So I'm going to stop there, and I'm hoping that we can have a rich discussion together. Thank you. at All Stars, um, one of the things I'm very focused on are activities that not only grow All Stars on the ground, um, but that more broadly help to establish a new field that we are calling after school development. The, the, really the issue being that 
the work that's being done by so many people outside of school has its own distinctive and critical mission that's other than school. Uh, Americans have been taught, and in particular uh, poor Americans, not to talk about poverty. So people wander through the world having the experiences that you were sharing. They happen to them. They're completely destroyed, demoralized. They have no idea that what it has to do with is something that's much bigger than they are. And so I just think it's so important to grapple as, you know, intelligent people and professors and so on and so forth with this kind of life that people have to live as well as helping poor people do that. Otherwise, the kids have no sense, the parents have no sense, like they feel like I must have made this thing happen to me. They don't know what the world is um, actually like for them. These stories are horrendous and they also are normal. So the issue is how to have people work on that, both the people who don't have to have these experiences and the people who are living them. Otherwise, I think just so much destruction happens. We're a country that um, moralizes poverty. It's, it's, we, we think of it as a result of moral failing. And for 400 years, we've had that assumption. And so when we devise policies to address poverty, we do it in the meanest possible way. Because the assumption is that if we're not mean, right, all of these indolent people will get over on the government. I have advanced, along with other colleagues, um, the idea that the idea that you have to be mean is actually an untested hypothesis. And what uh, what we're advancing is a, a counter hypothesis that if you bring dignity to the poor, because after all, they're actually not them, they're us. If you bring dignity to the poor, you might actually see greater mobility from poverty than if you, than if you treat the poor with stigma and shame. So we're going around the country, hanging out at places like All Stars, which is, it has a dignity effect, right? I mean, that's what you do here. You bring dignity and voice to people. And uh, we want to see if we can prove empirically that, uh, that the dignity effect is actually more powerful in spurring mobility from poverty than uh, the shame effect. Kathy, I'm thinking that I'm happy that you and your work has met all stars in our work. So as you've been talking to people and meeting people, from your head, do you get a glimmer of how your work in All Stars or some new developing work in All Stars could come together to advance, continue to advance work in the area of poverty. That, yes, is not based on meanness. It is based on an approach about development, creating, creative and changing people's lives. So when David Grusky told me about All Stars and uh, Gabrielle approached me, she was probably shocked when I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> because I thought this might be it. One of the, and so one of the things that we're doing, we're doing some empirical work, um, but we're also, uh, beginning with All Stars, uh, traveling in the country in search of examples. Because in order to sort of sell this, this paradigm shift in how we think about poverty, we have to let people feel it and touch it and taste it. Right? And, and th this, this sort of identity project work is really resonant with people. You know, I've been working with the Gates Foundation partnership you know, for mobility from poverty, and we've identified All Stars as, as an exemplar in this, uh, one of four exemplars in this arena. Uh, I hope to write about it more. So I'm hoping, in some ways, what we need to do is to, to, to knit together a variety of efforts in this same domain in ways that, that create a uh, sort of a unified theme. Uh, you know, people all, everyone knows what grit is now. I want everyone to know what the dignity effect is, uh, you know, 10 years from now, or whatever it is we end up calling it. Uh, 
And, and so then we can say, oh, all stars. That's about the dignity effect. We know that's important. We're going to invest in that. This is what the nonprofit sector, I think, can do, is play a huge role in, in creating a cultural and social shift relative to the dignity of the poor and relative to how people on the, at the 1%, people in the middle, people at the bottom, everyone understands and sees who people are who are poor, what our country is doing, and how we can move forward in that together. And I think that that's a, a more, that cultural shift, that developmental shift, if you will, is a more proper role for, for our sector and to then create models, if you will, that then some really big people got to come in and say, okay, we're going to take this model and now we're going to make it the, the way we do this. We're going to have a, um, you know, a, a cabinet for social development, like we have an education department. We're going to have, you know, these are the things that we need to invest in in, in America. I'm telling you the story of the back door at which I came to recognize the importance of things like the All-Stars. It was not what I set out to do. It hit me over the head, right? And that's kind of the wonder of it. 